In the shallow depths of the ocean, six miles south of Newport, Rhode Island, lies the wreck of the German U-boat U-853, a Type 9C submarine commissioned on the 25th of June, 1943. 23 months later, she and her entire crew were lost in a last-minute bid to disrupt American shipping. Displacing over 1,100 long tons with a length of 251 feet and a beam of 22 feet, U-853 had a top speed of 18 knots while surfaced and 7 knots submerged. She had an impressive range of nearly 14,000 miles at 10 knots while surfaced, but a limited 63 mile range while submerged at 4 knots. Her crew consisted of 4 officers and 44 enlisted men. 22 21-inch torpedoes in six tubes were complemented by a 4.1-inch deck gun and two anti-aircraft guns. Nicknamed the Tightrope Walker, an emblem of a yellow shield with a red horse on her sail was painted by her crew. Now keep this image in mind for later. Her first war patrol began in May of 1944 in preparation for a believed Allied invasion of Europe. Under the command of Helmut Sommer, U-853 spotted the incredibly fast RMS Queen Mary, full of troops and supplies. She attempted to make an attack, but was outrun by the converted ocean liner. After surfacing in the ship's wake, she was attacked by British aircraft. U-853 was able to return fire and damage all three aircraft. A month later, on the 17th of June, Puff Duff, that is high frequency direction finding, from the destroyer escort USS Hughes, DE-145, a member of the USS Croton Hunter Killer Group, detected a radio signal from U-853, only 30 miles away. Aircraft were launched, and the Hughes, along with her sister ship USS Frost, DE-145, were dispatched to investigate. Lieutenant J.G. Hughes, and Ensign Valiech both made multiple strafing runs on U-853 before the sub was able to dive. Damage to the sub was minor, but two crew were killed and 12 others were wounded, including Captain Somer, who received over two dozen shrapnel and bullet wounds. He and many of his crew were deemed unfit for duty shortly after and were relieved. Her second patrol was uneventful, and Helmut Fronsdorf assumed command. Her third and final patrol began in late February of 1945. Now equipped with a snorkel, allowing the sub to stay submerged longer, U-853 was tasked with harassing American shipping along the East Coast. It took longer than normal to reach the United States, because Fronsdorf chose to stay submerged for most of the voyage, to avoid detection. But by April, she was off the coast of Maine. On the 23rd, she spotted and attacked the World War I-era patrol boat USS Eagle 56. Eagle 56 was towing targets for bomber training exercises when she blew up amidships, breaking into two and quickly sinking. Only 13 of her 62-man crew survived. The destroyer USS Selfridge, DD-357, arrived shortly after and dropped a pattern of depth charges on a suspected sonar contact. No evidence of damage to U-853 was discovered. A naval board of inquiry days later included the testimony of some of Eagle 56's crew who claimed to have seen a red and yellow emblem on the then unknown submarine sail. This matches with U-853's yellow shield with a red horse that her crew had painted shortly after her commissioning. The cause of Eagle 56's sinking was officially listed as a boiler explosion, and it wasn't until 2001 that the Navy overturned this ruling and reclassified the sinking as combat-related. After sinking Eagle 56, U-853 traveled south along the coast and was once again attacked by depth charges after being detected by USS Muskegon. PF-24. Once again, the submarine escaped, 
continuing to live up to her nickname of the Tightrope Walker. But this luck ran out on the 5th of May. On this day, U-853 was waiting off the coast of Point Judith, Rhode Island for a target. Hundreds of miles to the east, Carl Donuts ordered all U-boats to cease operations and return to their base. It's unknown if U-853 ever received this message. It is possible her radio antenna had been damaged or destroyed in the previous month's depth charge attacks. But without knowing for sure, you can't rule out the possibility that Fromsdorf had ignored the message. In any case, the Collier SS Black Point was spotted by U-853 and targeted. She fired a torpedo, blowing Black Point's stern off and sinking her in 100 feet of water only 15 minutes later four miles south of Point Judith, Rhode Island. She would be the final U.S. flagged merchant ship lost in the Atlantic. Twelve crew were lost and 34 were rescued by fellow merchant ships in the area who also sent out urgent messages to the Navy. A hunter-killer group was quickly formed around the destroyer USS Erickson DD-440, the frigate USS Moberly PF-63, and the destroyer escorts USS Amic DE-168 and USS Atherton DE-169. They quickly arrived at the scene of the attack and located U-853, sitting on the ocean floor, attempting to hide. Unfortunately, sonar and the shallow depths made it impossible for her to hide. Depth charges and hedgehogs were fired, and for 16 hours, the ships slowly worked their way closer and closer to sinking the last U-boat in U.S. waters. Early on the morning of the 6th, Two Navy blimps joined and located oil slicks. After making their own attacks with rockets, the Atherton and Moberly made more depth charge and hedgehog attacks. Debris rose to the surface, indicating a kill. Atherton and Moberly received joint credit for the sinking of UA-53, which lies in just over 100 feet of water, six miles south of Point Judith. She is a recognized war grave and also a recreational dive site. Some of the items recovered that day are on display at the museum. The son of Charles R. Beller Jr., Yeoman First Class, donated items related to his father's service aboard the Atherton, including this piece of wood planking recovered that day. A piece of the life raft's instructions, which was also recovered, was added to the wood at some point prior to its donation to the museum. One of U-853's life rafts was also recovered, donated by Atherton crew members Carl F. Barth Jr., signalman second class, in 2006. This rubber life raft, barely large enough for one man, has been painted with a drawing of U-853 and the attack date. Finally, an officer's hat. This was donated by the daughters of Lieutenant Commander Lewis Eislin, captain of the Atherton. At the time of its recovery, official reports and newspaper articles list this as the hat of U-853's captain. While it's certainly possible it belonged to Formsdorf, it's difficult to prove that, so we have classified it as a German U-boat officer's hat at the museum. Now all these items and more are available to view in person for anyone visiting the museum. Numerous other documents and medals have also been donated to the museum related to the sinking of U-853 and the Atherton. Much of this collection can be viewed online through our collections website, ussslater.pastperfectonline.com. You can find a link in the description. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you learned something new about UA-53 and the operations of German U-boats only miles off the coast of the United States. If you have any questions about these or other artifacts, or would like to see a certain place aboard the Slater, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And until next time, take care everybody.